Hello everybody, I'm back again today to bring forth another word from the Lord because he started speaking to me um, and through me through a question that a dear sister in Christ had brought forth pertaining to the Melchizedek priesthood. And uh, what he wanted to talk to me about was explaining to everyone what he had me explain to her and doing the best I can because because there's actually a lot of information about the Melchizedek priesthood uh, that God has brought forth in scripture and in his other children and in teachings and what we're headed toward and what his goal is so there's he said sometimes it's um it's 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 going to seem like information overload. <laughs> so he wants us to be very careful that we're going to bring forth um, what's necessary at this time, but not too too much. And um, this whole process that he's been bringing me through and to with the understanding of the true salvation of a soul fits right in here. This is why we have to be able to know our true identity and walk in our true identity and not be persuaded to continue to walk in the uh, make-believe or false belief system masked identity, meaning man's creation of who man is. And he speaks about that in, in scripture, which we'll get to in some of those scripture points, which I want to thank Brother Mark for bringing these things up to me in a conversation with what I had sent him pertaining to this. And some of the questions that were posed to me were, are the 144,000 going to be priests, meaning as they walk out in the earth realm, um, did John the Baptist hand over the Levitical priesthood to Jesus? Um, and who is this Melchizedek? And he said, the first thing that I would like to talk about is that latter part of who is this Melchizedek. Well, first of all, the name Melchizedek itself means my king of righteousness or the king of righteousness. And again, there's only one of those folks. And as well, Melchizedek, it says in scripture, had no beginning and no end. I know only one person who has had no beginning and no end and has been the self-existent eternal one, Jehovah. I believe from what the Lord has shown me all through scripture and everything that he represents, as well as Abraham tithing 10% to Melchizedek, the only person that we give any tithe to or we return an investment to that was invested in us is God. So these are all reasons why the Lord has told me Melchizedek is a manifestation of me in the earth, Janet, of God in the earth. So in the Old Testament, when we see Melchizedek coming forth, the the Melchizedek priesthood has been eternal because Melchizedek has been eternal, no beginning and no ending. And as well, it has as who we are in the spirit has always has always existed, especially who God is in the spirit. And he said, I am a priest. That's who I am. King is my role. That's authority and dominion in the earth and over all things, etc. and so on. And so when he tells us to take dominion in the earth, that's a king role. That's an authority role, a dominion role. But who we are, like what we are, is is more than a role. It's, 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 it's the components of all that we exist as, and that's a priest. And so for her first question, are the 144,000 that was proposed to me today, are they going to be priests? No, they are priests. And, th and that's the kicker with all of this that he's bringing forth with this this live in the spirit, live in your true identity, is that we often think that we're going to be um, promoted into something like that. No, you'll be manifested into that, but you should be manifesting who you truly are to begin with. I mean, ideally, that's what we're supposed to be manifesting. And as we manifest what we, what and who we truly are, that becomes soul integrated. Your soul and your spirit are on in alignment. And then that's what you walk out. That's what you manifest to the earth. So the 144,000 that are going to walk out in a greater measure when Father in, imbues and endows them with what he's going to um, in a corporate and far large and reaching abroad mass manifestation of his children to do the greater works, that is, is because they're already walking in their true identity and that's key. 
I mean, we're not going to, you, you, you cannot manifest in this make believe realm, which means like, what do you believe? Because that's what you're going to be making and manifesting. This is the manifest realm, meaning you bring it into fruition. You bring it into a fruit, you bring it into a show up and show out a manifest. And so what, what, if we're not walking in our true identity as a priest, knowing that that's who we are, we're not going to be a manifest son. We're not going to be a Romans eight kid, you know, uh, 144 thousand caliber pre Melchizedek order priesthood priest in the earth because you have not reconciled with your true identity yet that's why he's doing all this soul work so I had corrected her saying will they be um well they will be manifest but they should be being manifest already especially and at least in their soul realm because they are priests so it's not will they be they are and we need to come back into our true identity and that's something that he wanted me to bring up as one of the points now did john the baptist hand over the levitical priesthood to jesus no I mean, here's why, and we're going to bring up some scriptures from the Old Testament, is because in the Old Testament, she had also asked, um, because, and what I mean is that the Levitical priesthood was dying out when Jesus was coming in. That was his whole point, was we're about to bring in a new covenant, a new sacrifice, a new creation in Christ Jesus, a new law, which which will be requiring a new priesthood and a new priesthood, which will require new laws written on your hearts and new new manifestations enacted and walked out in the earth. I mean, that was that was part of his job while he was alive to begin to demonstrate that to us. He said, I had a carnal nature like the rest of you. I was tested in all points common to man and I had to overcome in those ways. And you two will have to carry a cross and you'll have to come out of being this dirt being buried in death and creating this false identity of who you think you are. And you're going to have to come into your true identity, which reflects exactly like I am. You look and operate exactly like me at your true core identity. And until you are reuni reunited with that, that identity, throwing down, casting down every other knowledge and image that sets itself against that and you and your true identity, you cannot manifest properly and clearly in this realm. So that's why he's doing all that soul work. That was his job as he walked around preaching and teaching and telling people on, on one hand in one moment with Peter, who do you say I am? And he said, yeah, you're the you're the son of God, you're the Messiah, you're the Christ. And then like, it seemed like five seconds later, he's rebuking Peter because he's gone back down into slumming it into hell and thinking for himself, leaning on his own reasonings as a Satan being, and meaning that he fell right in line with whatever Satan was sending forth for him to do that as that possibility and that nature. And he had to rebuke him saying, you savor not the things of God, but the things of man. Okay. So when God talks about, um, you know, this, this temple not built by man's hands, that's what he's talking about. You don't get to build the temple of God based on your own reasonings of who you think you are and who you think God is. That's not how this program works. It works by you knowing God's true identity and knowing your true identity and walking therein. That's walking in the light and walking in the truth. That's abiding in Christ. And so he's asking me to go into some of these verses that were brought up. And as I was speaking with Brother Mark earlier, he said, you nailed it. You you got it, you know, with what I had sent him on this. And um, and so one of the things that I had said was, listen, cause, cause because it was po it was it was post that the Melchizedek priesthood was brought forth and introduced already in the Old Testament. I said, no, Melchizedek was not the priesthood. The Levitical priesthood was brought forth, which was the outward representation. It's like living in the outer court and looking at all the manifestation of some actions. But if the inner court is not dealt with, the actual soul realm and the spirit realm, then you got a Pharisee who's going through outward actions. But the inward man has no clue who Jesus is, God is, the Holy Spirit is, righteousness is, to walk in the light at all. And they're blind and they're deaf. So I said Melchizedek was, Melchizedek was presented in the Old Testament, which is that he came around and he spoke the truth of who he is, like as in what he is, who he is, and that whole nature. And Abraham latched on to that. And so did the descendants of Abraham, the faith descendants of Abraham, all of us who are now believers in the king of righteousness, because that's who he is. His name means the king of righteousness or the righteous king who is self-existent, who has never had a beginning nor an ending. Okay. There's only one person that operates like that and operates flawlessly like that. 
So again, Father said that was a manifestation of me in the Old Testament. But as you can see, the priesthood, the Melchizedek order priesthood was not being walked out. The Levitical priesthood was being walked out, which was a foreshadowing, meaning, and, and parabolically, meaning that it's a comparison. So you're to look at that and compare the outward actions they did with a tent and all the, the uh, adornments of the tent and all the tools and implements of the tent, the tabernacle itself, the curtains, the Holy of Holy, the outfit that they would wear. Uh, the Umen the Umen and Thuman, Thurman, or I can't remember what they're called, but the and the the yes and the no and all the stones. Are, okay, that's all outward that the priest had to dress and wear and operate in. That's all outward productions. None of that cleansed them. That was his whole point. None of this animal sacrifice, animal sacrifice, let alone okay, animal meaning like less than and animalistic. Okay. That's all representation of the soul that has fallen into the depravity of the carnal nature and that we've got to go far beyond that. This is not the perfected covenant. It is an inferior covenant meant to show you the the ways of carnality and that that you're you cannot come out of any of that without a more perfect and better sacrifice. OK, which was why Jesus had to come, which was why God himself had to incarnate, leaving behind all of his divinity, all of his power and all that to lead himself because he was here to represent to us that we were going to have to follow the father and be submissive to the father and not be led by man made of man's hands, making our temple, the interior of who we are made by our own hands, our own reasonings and our own thought processes and emotions and all of that, our own principles. No, this is a building of the Lord, not carved out by hands. Okay. That foundation. So when when our Lord came forth, finally, when it was, so this priesthood always existed because God always existed, but in the spirit, okay, it always, it always existed. He brought forth the Levitical priesthood to show us sort of like a little kid would watch a movie or you watch a play so that he can walk it out and go, you see all this happening? This is a, this is a parable. It's a story. We're going to have to go beyond this. And I need you to do this children inside your souls, which means go to the Lord, Make a sacrifice inside your soul with the better sacrifice, which is what Jesus came to give you, which is himself. So take the better sacrifice, which is him, all of who he is, what he is, his attributes, his ways about him. Bring that all into your soul and let that and him save your soul, convert your soul and bring your soul back into alignment with who your true identity is in your spirit and walk therein in unity as one with God. It is exactly what Yeshua came to do, to show the better covenant. That's the better agreement you're going to make inside your soul, not with the agreement of hell, not with the agreement of Satan and the fallen nature and, and the like defeatist mentality of this, that, and the other. No, rise above and come back into your true identity. The defeatist thing is Satan. He's been defeated. He's a defeated foe. Don't live there. Don't live in the negativity. Don't let him trap you there. Don't be a, a, a prey victim to the, to the follower's snare, Okay. But that is all something we have to come into agreement with because he gave you the opportunity in this lifetime to choose whom you're going to serve. See, we say all the time, well, I'm going to serve God. Well, are we in our soul? Because the reality of whom we serve is whether or not you're carving out your own temple uh, by your own man's hands. Going with what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it, and think what you want to think and lean on your own reasoning and have the feelings that you, that are just running amok inside of you, doing nothing about it. That's a temple made by man's hands, and it's, it's never going to be what is necessary to walk out with our Lord in the better than, okay? So in, in general, uh, Melchizedek came. But the priesthood wasn't there in the Old Testament because the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, the Old Testifying, the Old Covenant was still in play. So Yeshua comes in in the New Testament and he, he, he is the full Godhead in a body. So you've got the Father, you've got the Son, and you've got the Holy Spirit all together in that manifest person walking out in the earth, showing all the rest of the children how to be a child of God. Right. And so what he's saying is you have to overcome this nature, this flesh nature uh, in your soul, which is like a blank slate every day. And what you're going to believe and what you're going to write upon. It's like it's like, are we going to write our lives out? Are we going to write our identities out? Or are we just going to listen to who God made us to be to begin with and come into agreement with him and live therein in the light and in life? Right. In the truth. So that's what Jesus came and accomplished an open door to. 
now in religion we're like we just pray a prayer and we just ask jesus like to that 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 you know to to receive the fact that we believe that he's messiah and god and that he accomplished what he did oh good night that's religion he said work out your salvation that's a job you have to do and work is work it's labor it's effort and so work out your salvation salvation to what if your spirit was born again the minute you said yes to him for who he is you are given a new a new conduct to be able to work with but are we in our soul realm so the order of melchizedek is the priest who now understands he's a priest again their their soul man has realized listen whatever i or anyone else uh you know projected upon me in this realm is false and i've been creating this person of who i think i am better i strip myself of all of that go in do some analysis with god in my soul and find out who he made me to be and that's the key that's when we finally submit to him and the repentance is when your mind changes and you actually start to believe who you really are and you walk in the priesthood again that's why they will manifest in this realm they will manifest in this realm because they know their true identity again. No one will manifest as a priest in this realm until they know, until they know and are living in the belief that that is truly who they are, and they're walking therein. It's not a put on. It's not convincing yourself of anything. You're not dreaming up um, any new identity, etc., and so on. And Brother Mark had brought up a few Bible verses. Now he has different um, translations here. So some of them, some are King James. Um, um, you know, King James, uh, the 21 uh, edition, and some are amplified and some. So but I'm going to read what he's brought forth because it was very beneficial. He's in, he brought forth Hebrews 7, 9 through 19, and he just listed 9 through 19. But the point is that a person might even say that Levi, and then he has in quotations, the father of the priestly tribe himself, who received tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, the father of all Israel and of all who believe, that's the people of faith, for Levi was still in the loins unborn of his forefather Abraham when Melchizedek met him. That's the whole point. We've had it inside of us all along to step into the true priesthood and to step into truly manifesting, which means showing up and showing out through our soul and through our actions and through our emotions and all of that, that we are God's children, that we are the royal priesthood, that we do know who our, what our true identity is, uh, what that true identity looks like, sounds like, acts like, smells like, tastes like, etc. and so on, and we're stepping into that. That's this whole soul rescue. That's soul salvation. And Brother Mark had gone further in here to say that the entire book of Hebrews is a manual for our priesthood. And I would have to agree with him because it's bringing us into not only what Yeshua HaMashiach uh, fulfilled when he walked. He went everywhere teaching people who God is and what the kingdom of God is so that you know who Satan is and what the kingdom of Satan is. And again, Satan's kingdom will be formed on what man forms because he has no body to walk out any kind of creativity in this realm. He hijacks man. So when we say uh, a, a temple made by man's hands, that if you're the temple, then it's what man is making of himself and purporting as himself and what mask he's wearing or what true identity is wearing given to him by Abba. That's different. That's not man made by man hands on a rock or a foundation made by man. So there's no foundation built, no false identity built by man on man leaning on his own reasoning. So I'm just scrolling here really quickly to see what else he brought up. The spiritual preceded the physical, and the physical got the instructions to be a mirror image of the spiritual. Exactly. Exactly. The physical was just a copy. <clears throat> That's why we're supposed to look back at the parables. And the Old Testament is indeed a parable. I mean, the Old Testament Levitical priesthood is a par it's a parable and a parallel. One is in the physical doing physical actions. The other is in the spirit doing spiritual act actions, and it is to the salvation of the soul. And then he shared Exodus 20:25. 20, this was the New American Standard Version. If you make an altar of stone for me, you shall not build it of cut stones, for if you wield your tool on it, you will profane it. That's that whole thing about if the temple is you, and technically let's, let, let's for the moment say that that's not your actual body body. I mean, just for the moment, it's that it's your soul, okay, that, you, that is housed with your body, okay? If your soul is the temple, 
like your consciousness and all, you know, which would, which would include the housing of the body. Okay. But if your soul is truly the temple that either chooses God to exalt God, I choose God to serve God this day, right? Whom are you going to choose? If you're truly serving God, then you'll truly serve God in his true identity, truly serve God in your true identity. Know both of those and your soul will be converted and subdued and overruled by your spirit and his spirit because they're one working together to now save your soul. This is a joint co-laboring in this earth because you have every right to choose to stay in hell and stay buried under the surface. But instead, he's calling forth us to break out of death and pop the surface of the ground and be this planting of the Lord that sprouts up a new birth and becomes an oak of righteousness. That's a fully mature one, a fully mature planting. And Mark went on and said, Isaiah 66, 1, thus says the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? His whole point is, if we're going to stay in our true identity and his true identity, then he has a house of rest. But the house that you build unto me, is are we going to actually build a house for the Lord, which is in truth and in light and in true identity, ours and his, walking therein in the light and living and abiding and being found in Christ, because that's where he abides. So is our soul, is our temple actually going to be built by God? You know, a temple built not by the hands of man. Is it going to be built by God or are we going to continue to build the temple based on our own reasonings that we lean upon, our own judgments, our own opinions, our own perceptions that are based in, in a false identity? Because if so, we're never going to walk in our true priest, pr priestly calling because that's who we are. And we're not going to have that authority and dominion in the earth because Satan's going to go, listen, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? I mean, even the devil is asking us if we're aware of our identity, because if we're not, if we're truly not aware of who we are and we're not walking in it, then they know that, 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 that they still have usurped our authority. And Brother Mark brought up 2 Samuel 7, 5. And I think this is the NIV version. It says, go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? And, and the whole point is that David wanted to build the Lord a temple on the outside because at that point they were still in the Levitical priesthood and he wanted to do right by God and he wanted to honor God in that way. Having seen further now, because we see the full picture of Jesus coming in later, the whole temple and tabernacle intent and all of that was to show us that we need a tabernacle with God inside because the king is inside and the kingdom is inside. But so is hell and so is the devil. Which one are we going to tabernacle with? And that was the point here, that it cannot be a building that is built by the hands of man. And then he brought up, I believe this might be still in... Second Samuel, but I'm not sure because he doesn't have the reference exactly, but it says similar. So it says, go tell my servant, David. So I'll have to ask him where it is and maybe he can put it in a comment if he listens to this video. Um, but that night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, go and tell my servant, David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? Uh, I'll stop us right there. No, I am not, Lord. I am not one to build you an outer temple or an inner temple. You need to build your temple on your foundation inside of me and based on the truth. And that's the point we need to see from spiritual eyes. I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? His whole point is, I'm not looking for your outward. That's a parable. I told you the Levitical priesthood was to show you all of these outward actions that were supposed to make you think, what does this represent on the inside? How am I supposed to be with God on the inside? The temple of the Lord is on the inside. The, the, the preparation of walking in his true identity and our true identity is on the inside. The coupling and the covenanting is on the inside, right? So he's saying, like, I'm not, I didn't ask you to build me a house on the outside because he he folks, he doesn't inhabit like permanently any kind of a four-walled building called a church out there in the world as what we know. It's us. 
And so wherever we go, if he's inhabiting and, and indwelling with us, wherever we go, he's going to be there. So when we all show up at church, if we were all housing God, then that's why he's in that building. But that it's a, that's a mixed pot that I'm not even going to go into right now. Now then, verse 8, Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people. I have been with you wherever you have gone. And that So think about that. The availability of the Holy Spirit was with him all along. It wasn't a certain building. I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I'll make your name great like the names of the great men on earth, and I'll provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own. Do we think, let me finish that, a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Do we think that that he's not talking about, he's talking about the spiritual lineage, okay? He's going to bring forth in the carnal lineage of the line of Judah through David, the Messiah. And in and through the Messiah, everyone will be able to join the tribe of Judah. This is why God is telling a lot of people you're in the tribe of Judah. Because many people have heard this. It's because if you're actually in Yeshua, the first thing he's going to tell you is you're in the tribe of Judah, which is the ruling kingdom tribe. Because all the other tribes, no matter what, are all going to come into the kingdom of Judah too, because that's the ruling and reigning kingdom, because that's what Messiah not only has to prove in these latter days, he has to prove the lineage, which is why Matthew holds the whole lineage line. He has to prove that he came from that line and that he is from the tribe of Judah. And so anyone inside of him is. Okay, I mean the spiritual tribe of Judah, the spiritual ruling and reigning tribe. But as he says that, he says, I'll provide a place for my people and plant them. If we think that that's like a literal place only in Jerusalem when he comes to take over Jerusalem, that's only a superficial understanding of that, that will all be relocated there and yada yada. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a superficial understanding. It's that he's planting this place inside you. You're the temple and he, you're the planting of the Lord. And so he's going to he's gonna have a place provided for his people inside and out, in heaven, in the new earth, in the millennial reign, in Jerusalem, sure, but also you, because you've provided a place for him inside, a place that was not carved out by man's hands of a stone or a foundation, but the rock on which you are founded is the truth. And you live therein and abide therein in the light. And that's your real identity and his. And anything that sets itself against those two things, your identity and his and the truth, that has to be done away with. And he, sa he says that wicked people will not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning. Okay, let me stop right there. If we see that outwardly, then we understand like outward enemies like, it, you know, like as, as if all, another nation, another country came against us in war. Okay, but when he says wicked people will not oppress them anymore, that's talking about demonic entities. That's talking about your false identity. That's talking about all of the entrapments of all the lies that exist inside of you. If you're founded on the truth and you're founded on God and you're walking in who you really are, which is a priest of the Lord made in the exact image of God, you will no longer be oppressed by an enemy at all in any way shape or form and he says i have done ever since the time i appointed leaders over my people israel i will also give you rest from all your enemies that's how you want rest from all the warfare you want rest from all the enemies you got to come into your true identity which is a priest in the order of melchizedek because we're made in his image we're a reflection of him everything that he is is what we are at, at our blueprint core level and when we will come into agreement with that and will cast down anything that sets itself against that you will walk in your true identity you will know your identity the enemy me will say I know Paul and I and I know Jesus and now I know this one and they'll know your name because you will have you will, you will have transcended out of the grave you will have popped through the, the ground you will have come up you will have become this planting of the Lord inside your soul in your real identity and you'll be in Christ and Christ in you and you will become a mature one you will become a righteous oak a fully mature planting of the Lord and then you'll fruit out and that's what the enemy hates is that once you get to that fully mature state, you will fruit out. You will be bring in you. You will bring in the man child company. You will bring out more first fruits of God. That is the pioneers. There is a pioneering people that are coming forth that are these first ones. A first fruit means the first one to show on the tree. That would be the tree of life. Real life in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus and us. Real life in the real identity in Christ Jesus and in us. And when that happens, you will fruit out like what I'm doing right now, he said, will fruit out to all these other people. 
You will spread the truth and they will be able to pull this into them and what they do with it will determine whether or not they become a duplicate fruit just like the Messiah too and a pioneering one at that. Because he said, I'm going to call forth my first fruits very soon to manifest. And when they do, and when everyone else sees it, they will jump on board and they will do the work with me. And they'll come into the truth and real relationship and experience with the Lord instead of religion. And we're going to set captives free. And that's his whole point here that these things would take place. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I'll raise up your offspring to succeed you. That's the whole point. I'll bless your generations. If you live right unto me, Janet, I'll bless your generations because the, the you have established your true identity. My true identity has been established inside your soul and you're fruiting it out to the rest of the people. And everybody is benefiting from the truth. I will establish his kingdom. And he's talking to David, but that is all of us through Yeshua HaMashiach. He is the one who will build a house for my name. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. So the Lord did that with, with David because he did it forever because Jesus came from him. So now that throne is established for forever through the through the lineage of, of the of lineage line of Judah. And he says that um, he's going to build a house for his name. If he's building a house for his name inside of you, that's his character and authority. When you look up name in the Strongs, it says character and authority. You want his authority? You got you to get his character again. That's your true identity anyway. You're a priest. And so he says he's going to establish that forever. And I'll be his father and he'll be my son. That's to each and every one of us. That's who Jesus is to him through the lineage line of David and the line of Judah. That's who Jesus is to the Father. And if you're in Jesus, you're the same. That's how he looks at you, the exact same way. And it says, when he does wrong, I'll punish him with a rod wielded by men and floggings inflicted by human hands. That means, like, listen, I'm going to have parents for, for my son. You know, like even if that's spiritual parents in the earth and when he does wrong and he needs correction, there will be men that will help him with that. But he goes out and says, but my love will never be taken away from him as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Why? What's the difference? David's tabernacle was under the Lord. He was building a tabernacle inside of himself for the Lord to be exalted there. The truth and the truth of who he was. Was he perfect at that all the time? No. Did he slum it down in, in leading his own self again in hell, hellish, carnal, you know, fleshly ways and make mistakes? Absolutely. I mean, adultery, murder, there's a lot of things that he did. But there's a lot of things that he did right with the Lord, and it was his heart. God knows the motives and why we do what we do. So it's not the infractions themselves, but what's at the true heart motive? And David built a tabernacle, a kingdom for the Lord inside, and truly exalted him. So when we say he's going to rest, resurrect the tabernacle of David in the latter days. That's in you, in your soul. And if you're willing to walk as David and truly walk in your true identity in Christ Jesus and know Christ's identity and your identity and walk therein in the light, and you're willing to deal with and fight against and cast down and get rid of any other false identity, then you too will have that name established inside of you. And you too will will have the love of God that can never be taken away from from you and you will be exalted like David and the tabernacle of David will be rebuilt and the wastelands the ruins will will be going from ash or death to beauty which is life and your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me your throne will be established forever and so this is really really important that because it says Nathan reported to David all the words of this entire revelation in verse 17. And the Lord wants to reveal that to us today. So the priesthood, people are wanting to know what it what is the priesthood and 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 how do I know if I'm a manifest one or I will be or what is it and and what's the 144,000 and all that. Okay. The priesthood is an order or a membership of people that know their true identity and know Christ's true identity. They know whose image they are made exactly like the Son of Man. They are made exactly like how Jesus was made. And they've come into the realization that that, that is their true person. And they walk there in the ways of Jesus, which was to submit everything 
to the Father to be led and reformed by the Father in the earth inside of their mental, emotional, and actions of their will state. So the manifesting child of God will have submitted to the Lord, submitted to their true identity, submitted to his true identity, walk therein, and remain in the truth. It doesn't mean that you might not come out and slum it for a moment, but you get corrected right away and you realize you fell into a trap from the Father. He tempted you, lured you, okay? But that tabernacle is going to be resurrected. So if that's what's going on inside of you and that tabernacle is being resurrected, that soul state of you is, is being converted back into your true identity, out of the fallen nature, out of the knowledge of evil being conducted in you then you too will be walking in your priestly duties again, meaning your priestly person. You will be a part of the order of Melchizedek, Melchizedek being the king of righteousness. You will then walk thereby in righteousness, right? Leaving the path of unrighteousness or the broad path, the easier way to live. You will no longer be building a temple of your own hands, of the hands of man carved, from, carved out of stone, right? Meaning a carved out foundation. You will now be walking on a foundation on the rock himself, capital R for rock, meaning the truth, Yeshua HaMashiach, you will be walking in the true foundation found inside Christ and Christ inside of you, resurrected in the truth, not made by man's hands, but made by what God says of you. So again, who do you say you are? Are you a priest made after the high priest himself? Melchizedek, the king of righteousness, who has an order of people or a membership of people, a body of people who are both priestly and kingly. Because if that's you and you're working with God to step into your true identity and to deal with everything inside your soul that sets itself against God, then you will become a manifest Romans 8 child. Manifest means it's going to show. So whatever's really going on in your soul will show. It'll show up and it'll show out in the realm that is the realm of make-believe, meaning what you believe will be made known. It'll be manifest. So in the spirit, he already knows who you are. In the spirit, you already know who you are. But in this realm, the make-believe realm, the realm for what you believe will be made known and manifest, the manifest realm, the material realm, it's really dependent on whether or not your soul has been converted, whether or not you've worked out that salvation he gave you. The salvation is himself and the truth. And are we walking therein? Are we walking and abiding in the light? Are we remaining in Christ Jesus? This is what he, he has asked me to bring forth because people are wondering, what is the manifest ones? What is the 144,000? What is the priesthood order of Melchizedek? What are their duties and their what? It's knowing your true identity and your true identity is a true reflection of Yeshua HaMashiach when you realize that that's who you are. You're not him, but what he is, is who you are. And he was formed after a direct image of the father. If you've seen me, you've seen the father, the father and I are one. Okay. That's what needs to take place with us. If you've seen me, then you've seen the father, the father and I are one. How does that happen? Your soul has to be converted. Your soul has to be saved and your soul has to go through repentance, which is a complete turnaround in thinking. And your soul cannot be formed by the hands of man. You cannot form your identity. You don't get to say who you are. You have to come under submission of the Holy Spirit who will tell you who you are and then you have to come into agreement and all that you are is beautiful all that you are is smart and intelligent and wise and powerful and capable lovely and worthwhile you are so valuable you are priestly you are righteous you are holy and anything that wants to threaten that needs to be dealt with because you need to come out of the grave. The grave is the false identity. The grave is the, is the repeated patterns, behavioral patterns and principles that we lean on our own reasoning and create this, this terrible facade of ourselves. And he said, again, he's reminding me, I don't care if you're beautiful on the outside and rich and wealthy and you think you have need of nothing. You are blind and you are deaf and you are naked and you are filthy which means that you're deluded and you need to come into the truth of, of who you are because that outward pres presentation and the outward finances and homes and cars, none of that is a true represent re representation of who you are. You can have all that and be a wreck inside living a false identity inside 
It's why you see so many rich people purport themselves to be a certain way, but then they end up taking their lives. Why? Because the inside was never reformed. It was never saved. It was never loved properly, not by them nor by God. And they assumed all, all of this identity based on all these projections from everyone else. What did everyone else say that they were? What did everyone else think they were? What did, what did, what did they... What actions did they do towards them that made them believe a false a falseness about themselves? We will never be free. We will never be walking in our true identity as a priest, holy and righteous and beautiful and loved and 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 worthy and precious to the hilt for God. We'll never be able to walk in that if we will not be reformed in our soul. That is what repentance is. This is why he keeps saying salvation is so much more than praying a prayer and knowing that God is Savior, believing that God is Savior, believing that he is God, believing that he's Lord. You have to make him all those things inside of you by an act of your will, which is not grievous and heavy to carry out, the scripture says. And we have to walk there. And there is going to be tribulation and suffering. Why? Because there's a false identity and there's an enemy of, the, of, of your soul who, who, who works through carnal open doors. And so all through this, you're going to go through that. And, and not just because of your own soul, but everybody else is going through that. So they're going to do stuff at us that's going to cause tribulation and suffering and all that. However, if your inner man, if your soul man can get on board with your spirit man and know your true identity and walk therein in the light, there it, the suffering ceases. Because you know that it doesn't matter what anybody else says about you. It matters what you and God say about you. It'll always matter what you say about you. God can tell you the truth of who you are. He can explain it to you in scripture, but until you believe it, you will walk in a false identity. You will walk in lack and suffering and shame and guilt and worthlessness and rejection and all of that, unbelieving, doubt, fear. So until we actually will come into the truth, your soul is under torment. It's under a false identity and it is held there, held captive by powers that are in the spirit realm called spirits that have energy and they suck and feed off of you while you remain in the false identity because they live in the fallen identity. So if we're going to live in a false fallen identity, they get to feed off of us. But if you'll go live in the truth and live in the light and be the priest that you are made to be, not who he's going to make you into, you are already that. So once we go live in that for real, you get set free and you feed on God, not some entity feeding off of you. You feed off of the light. You feed off of the truth. You feed off of the word, the bread, the sustenance of life himself. This is what he asked me to come back on and explain. And I think he did an amazing job by bringing forth the, the, the things that he brought forth to me, the questions that were purported or proposed to me, I should say, proposed to me, as well as the commentary that was available to me and the scriptural references brought forth by other brethren who were walking through this with me. And he said, we don't want to give them too much in one biteful because it is a lot. But it fits perfectly with what he's bringing in. And he keeps saying, I'm so close to manifesting this in a greater measure that I need them to understand the process very, very well. And again, I don't know how soon his soon is, but I love you all. I pray that this has enlightened you um, with revelation and truth and will bring you further and deeper into understanding the salvation of your soul and why it's necessary and and how you get freedom from that, number one, how you unite and be close to Abba, number two, in that. Um, and, and what, number three, what this what, what is the priesthood and the manifesting ones? It is all of that coming to fruition. It's you becoming that righteous oak tree who then becomes mature, breaking the ground, coming out of death, resurrecting again in your soul, walking out the true identity of you, walking in Christ, Christ walking in you, the light shining in you, the demonic entity is sliding off, being cast out and not able to affect you anymore because they're already defeated foes. Now they can't feed off you because you're feeding off the truth. You're living in the light. And now that you're mature, you're going to start popping out fruit, which means that someone else is going to take that fruit and eat thereof. Just like Adam and Eve ate thereof of the fallen and the broken and the false and the corrupt. You're going to produce a fruit in this earth with the Lord that is going to give sustenance to everyone else because you will live in the truth and the truth has set you free. 
made you free. And you're going to bring that to the others. And when they take and they eat of that fruit, when they eat of the tree of righteousness and, the, and, and, and that seed is planted in them, then they can break the ground, come out of death, be resurrected again inside their souls, be part of, blessed are those that are partake, partake in the first resurrection, become the planting of the Lord that sprouts up, continues to grow until it becomes a fully mature oak of righteousness that is a manifest man child of God. He is able to produce a child of God that became a man, a fully mature one. And then you start producing that fruit out in the world and spreading that truth and the seeds get planted into someone else. And then you get more laborers to the harvest. And then we get more people pulled into the kingdom of God, becoming our family members again by choice, by free will to unite with their true identity and God's and be saved therein. That's what the priesthood is all about. That's what he's going to manifest in the earth. That's why Jesus came and did what he did and exemplified what he did because he's the first one to walk that out. That's what firstborn means. And the rest of us are looking at our big brother going, that's what I got to do. That's that's who I really am. And I need to manifest this too. I need to grow up. I need to work out my salvation and deal with all these soul issues and bring my soul under submission to my spirit and walk therein in the truth and the light and life. That is what he is nigh about bringing upon the earth because religion is way far wider spread than what I just brought out. I mean, this is going to be new revelation to a lot of people, which means that, that there's people out there that have been doing this. They've been bringing forth these things. Okay, but, but right now, this is all coming forth. And he said, just because it's maybe not shared by far, wide, and large right now does not mean that I'm not going to blow it up the minute that this stuff becomes very evident that people need to start following the way of the Lord and walking the path, the ancient path of righteousness and doing these workings, co-laboring and being a, a partner with God. When the time comes and the events in the earth hit and the manifest ones come out, the others are going to jump on board and come right in as fruits behind them. But he said, I have some first fruits that are going to pop out on that tree. Just like when you watch these fruit trees that are in this picture, those are all fruit trees that, that you can't see right now, but there are little fruits that are already starting to come forth on those trees in Michigan. So it's going to be slower than down south in America. But in Michigan, they're already forming. There's some first ones. And then at the end of the season, there will still be fruits coming forth, but they'll be further down a few months from now. This is what he's walking out on the earth. This is what he's bringing us into. This is the revelation and understanding of it that I have. And this is what he's asked for me to bring forth. And Father, again, I, my hope is that this has been brought forth by your spirit to the extent that you are pleased with. And that the anointing, the revelation, the encouragement for people to walk therein with you and do the work that they need to do with you and confront anything that doesn't look like Jesus inside of them uh, to confront it and and to have you lovingly come in and encourage them to believe the truth because it starts with the believing part who do we say we are god because in this realm in this realm of manifesting things that matters this is the realm of manifestation which means that from the inside hidden things we manifest in this world the outward that can be seen and heard and felt and tasted and touched. So, Father, I pray that you will help each and every one of them come into the truth of who you are and the truth of who they are inside and that you will bind every entity wherever it needs to be bound, every strong man that needs to be, for this truth to hit them and for them to say the same. Father, help bind all these powers, make them powerless to this, and help me to go in with you and find all the areas that they've kept me in lies so that I can walk out and walk into the truth. I pray that you'll manifest that and spread that abroad as a blank check to anybody who needs that, Father, and bless them in this work. Bless them in a very accelerated and speedy work inside their souls because, Father, we have need for all of us to be coming into our true identity and yours and to manifest that in this earth so that we can finally start to begin to usher in your millennial reign.